In the name of God and prayers and peace be upon the messenger of God, we said that a person who reaches a level of benevolence must enjoy some kind of empowerment from God Almighty. Joseph, peace be upon him, had the highest levels of benevolence and therefore God rewarded him with many blessings. In a previous verse, our Lord Almighty says, and when he reached his maturity, we gave him wisdom and knowledge. Thus, we reward the righteous. So, both the blessings of wisdom and knowledge were a reward from God to Joseph, peace be upon him, in exchange for his benevolence. The last verse that we stopped at ends with God Almighty saying, we touch with our mercy whomever we will, and we never waste the reward of the good doers, meaning that God's empowerment of Joseph in the land of Egypt such that he moved wherever he wanted, supervised the work, and occupied the position of minister are all mercies from God as a reward for Joseph's benevolence. If we make a comparison between the state of Joseph in the past, when he remained in prison for several years, and his state now, when God empowered him on earth, we know that benevolence is one of the keys to goodness for humans, so whoever wants wisdom, knowledge, mercy, and empowerment must take the position of benevolence. God Almighty said, then we pass the book to those of our servants whom we selected. Some of them wrong their souls and some follow a middle course and some are foremost in good deeds. We find in these verses three circles of the nation of Islam, the largest circle of which are the believers who commit sins and misdeeds and fall short in obedience. And the middle circle are the Muslims who perform the duties of Islam and avoid major sins. And the small narrow circle is the benevolent who race to do good deeds. And in other verses, our Lord Almighty says, but the cautious will be in gardens and springs receiving what their Lord has given them before this they were virtuous, they used to sleep a little at night, and at dawn they would pray for pardon. So the benevolent reflect upon themselves and seek forgiveness from their Lord in the late hours of the night, spend from their money in good times and bad, and they suppress their anger and forgive people. Benevolence is a moral term that has spiritual and material dimensions including mastery of work. In the following verse, but the reward of the hereafter is better for those who believe and observe piety. The focus in the Holy Quran is always on the afterlife in order to remove confusion from people's minds and their pure nature and to alert them to the fact that they are in a transient residence and that after their death, they will become in the immortal residence. We do not find details about the hereafter as we find it in the Holy Quran. And when our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke to the companions about the afterlife, they felt that they were seeing it with their own eyes. The Holy Quran describes the hereafter, starting with the blowing of the trumpet until the resurrection and coming out of the graves, then the gathering, then the reckoning and the setting of the scales. The Holy Quran depicts paradise with its rivers, the beautiful huris, its greenery, its trees, its freshness, its fruits, its beds, sofas, and the cups in which drinks are served. It also depicted fire with its heat and cold modes, the tree of bitterness in it, and the chains in which criminals are bound. Non-Muslims go to the unknown after their death, but Muslims know what awaits them. Because the Holy Quran defined the afterlife for us and taught us that 
winning the reward of the afterlife comes through benevolence, faith, and piety. Faith has six pillars that we know well, which are believing in God, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day, and both good and evil destiny. All the conditions of faith are stated in the Quran, and the highest level of faith is to believe in God. God Almighty has made himself known to his servants in many places in the Holy Quran, including, for example, Ayat al-Kursi, which begins with the words of God Almighty. Allah, there is no God except he, the living, the everlasting. And among them is Surat al-Ikhlas, in which he says, say, he is Allah, the one. Allah, the eternal. He begets not, nor was he begotten, and there is none comparable to him. God Almighty also identifies himself through the most beautiful names, as is the case in the last three verses of Surah Al-Hasha. The Almighty says at the beginning, He is Allah, other than whom there is no God, knower of secrets and declarations. He is the compassionate, the merciful. Belief in the last day is also covered in the Holy Quran in an unparalleled way. There is no nation among nations and no culture among cultures that has a vision of the fate of humanity after death like the Muslim nation. The Holy Quran informed us of the fate of all humanity, including the Chinese, Indians, Africans, and every people else, and the fate of ancient nations, such as the Phoenicians, Pharaohs, Greeks, and Romans. Our Lord Almighty said in describing the great Quran, falsehood cannot approach it, neither from its front nor from its back. A revelation from a wise and praised. As for belief in decree and destiny, God has presented it to us in theoretical and practical ways. And the story of Joseph, peace be upon him, is a practical example of God's decree and destiny that befalls humans whether they like it or not. We will continue talking about faith in the next episode, God willing. In God.